Okay, thanks for joining everyone. Um, we're excited to share with you our thoughts on this subject, the decreasing timeline that we're seeing that it takes to get an intranet out into production, um, our view of what you can accomplish in 12 weeks. Um, as we will talk about in the webinar, we feel this shift is part of a digital transformation shift that many organizations are going through, trying to be uh, faster and more effective on the delivery of their IT projects. Um, in today's webinar, we'll also show examples of clients uh, that have taken up the charge to build a new internet and demo some of the features that enable them to be efficient at that um, while ensuring they still have a great user experience. A little house cleaning first. We will be recording it, so if you miss some of it or you want to share it around afterwards, um, feel free to reach out to us. We'll send you a link. Um, we'll also be uh, announcing when it's up in our newsletter, so if you haven't signed up for the Habanero newsletter, you can go to habaneroconsulting.com and register to get our newsletter there, and, and we'll let you know there. And uh, yeah, oh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the GoToWebinar software. Um, it, we'll be checking them at the end if we have time. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. So uh, if you met us at Ignite recently or perhaps somewhere else and you don't know us as Habanero, um, you might know us better for our product, Go. We built Go Intranet Accelerator as a response to, to what we saw as gaps in the market around a product that helps create really engaging experiences around SharePoint and Office 365, but is also tailored to the major transformational shifts that we see in communications, HR, and IT around this new human experience of technology. One of the questions we had a bit at Ignite um, where we recently showcased Go was, you know, how does Go fit into the umbrella of Habanero services? So from an organizational stability standpoint, it's, it's not our only revenue generating practice area, but we've been really committed to the internet space for over 20 years. And our vision around Go is that internet products just don't work by themselves. It's rather a merging of a consultative engagement with end users, um, aligning what you're doing with organizational strategy, that makes products like Go work. So we've crafted a customer journey with Go that includes an easy to use user experience and a consultative approach that makes sure you're, you're successful with your new internet. So I personally have been committed to this space for a while. Um, my name is Brian Edwards. Uh, I've been ha with Habanero for over 18, uh, 17 years. I started Habanero's collaboration practice and, and the foray of our, um, our interest in Microsoft SharePoint products. And, I'm still actively engaged in a lot of our projects as a senior consultant, usually helping with organizational strategy or, or uh, uh, this transform digital transformation efforts within organizations. Um, and uh, I definitely have seen a strong link between the shifts that we're seeing in, in how we work. So this era of digital transformation and the role an internet and digital workplace platform play to making organizations you know, great places to work. And um, I'm joined here with my colleague, Jan. I'll let um, Jan introduce himself. Hi there, my name is Jan. I've been with Habanero for about nine and a half years now. Uh, my responsibilities include managing the Go team, the release cycles, the roadmap, and ongoing client engagement, as, as well as Brian. I'm engaged in a lot of the uh, project work itself, delivering uh, Go to our clients. Great, so thanks, Jan. It's great to do a webinar with you. Uh, at Habanero, we're really passionate about um, helping create uh, better places to work. You know, this is our tagline is bringing life to work, and um, that's something we wear on our sleeve. And we believe there's so much untapped potential in today's society that can be unlocked by helping people build exceptional careers, um, helping them perform at uh, excellent levels within their organizations. And so, uh, you know, as a segue, I thought I'd talk a little bit about Habanero by, um, by the genesis of, you know, how we put this present or why we put this presentation together. So to some, you know, when we say build a modern internet in 12 weeks or less, um, I do think some people out there would think, you know, that that's a ridiculous notion or um, very ambitious. Um, maybe it's an arbitrary number um, or, or possibly that it's not even possible for the organization. And you might think, well, that, that'll work for a smaller organization, but um, not ourselves. Or perhaps you are a small organization, you're like, yeah, it sounds great, awesome. It's a great presentation to get a feel for, for what you can accomplish there. So, you know, why 12 weeks or less? So why did we start here? Um, is this a relevant timeline for you? What can you actually accomplish in 12 weeks? Um, you know, what does a 12-week internet actually look like? And, uh, you know, what are the exceptions to this? So when we start 
uh, we'll start talking about why the 12 weeks. We're going to look at a, a typical timeline on some of our projects. Um, dig into what building an internet product on a product looks like. So be it Go Internet Accelerator or another product, um, you know, this is this is sort of uh, a modern take on building internet is to be using an accelerator to, to help you with that. And, um, and I, you know, I like to think of building on Go as sort of like um, purchasing a, a, a pre-built house. Yeah, there's going to be some constraints, um, but obviously there's tons that you can change in that process. And it's obviously going to be a lot faster than starting from scratch. So that's obviously part of part of the formula here. We've been building uh, internets for quite a long time. We have a long history with the SharePoint platform and, and building on Microsoft. Um, our solutions have been featured in, in, in many of the global launch events for SharePoint. Um, and many, you know, if, if not most cases, these intranets were capital projects where the organizations invested in them. Um, they maybe took a, a quite a long time, sometimes two, three years to get to the end. Um, they were a labor of love for many of a communication director or an IT executive, for the people who own them. Um, when we have built and helped support building many of the case studies for the intranets, and while they're all different, you know, they all reference productivity as a, as a gain that we expect from an intranet and making it easier for end users to find knowledge, find people, and collaborate more effectively. Um, so, so most of these have this pretty critical cultural communications component to them. And as we were preparing for this presentation, one of the things I noted is in the last three years, we've, um, we've actually won three Nielsen Norman Awards, um, and, or the intranets we built have, I should say. Um, if you're not familiar with Nielsen Norman, it's a, quite a prestigious award for the internet um, space. They're, uh, they're one of the world's most respected research agencies on the topic of user experience. And, and their report each year recognizes 10 companies that have built um, innovative internet solutions. So if you haven't built the report, read the report, and, and you're about to build your internet, I definitely suggest you use it as a guide and see what other people are doing. But one of the interesting things that they publish in the report is the timeline for how long it takes to build an internet. And uh, last year, they noted the timeline for building an internet had dropped. And they said it had dropped to 1.4 years. And I thought this was kind of interesting. Like, um, this was uh, obviously relevant for us. We've been building for a long time. And yes, many of the internets we've built in the past have taken a long time. Um, and so it makes sense that they're capital projects, because you're not even finishing in the internet in the year that you might get value for it. Um, but but what we're noting is a, is a shift in this. Um, and it, Kind of talk through that shift, maybe a little bit of reflection on who we are as an organization and what we do in the market. Um, this this idea of helping humanize the workplace is is, um, is a mantra at Habanero, and it's a it's a fairly significant portion of who we are. And uh, one of the ways we do that is helping organizations wrap their heads around what it's like to be a modern workplace and helping them with the sort of um, being more agile, innovative cultures, and helping shift cultures to to being a mo more modern workplace. Um, we also, as we historically have, help employees connect with each other and, and connect with the values and the purposes of the organization. And we also help people get their work done to help and create, you know, great technology experiences that um, make meet people more efficient and effective at their jobs. So when we look back on this 1.4 years, there's something really amiss with this timeline when you compare it with this idea of we're trying to help companies be, you know, more modern workplace. And, and the, the problem is, that modern workplaces don't take 1.4 years before they start seeing benefits. Uh, this is just not an acceptable mechanism or way of running an organization that's, uh, that's trying to get continuous value, be innovative, um, and be on top of the change that's occurring in the market. And so when we look at the landscape of some of the internet projects that we've delivered in the past year, um, many of them are under 1.4 years. Most of them have been actually within this sort of 12 week mark or less. And these are, you know, very different organizations, many different industries. Um, the internets range from, you know, a thousand people to forty thousand people. Um, not all of them have had the internet up and running in twelve weeks um, with end users using it, but all of them have had a really aggressive sprint schedule and a working prototype within within twelve weeks. And if you think about it, I mean, twelve weeks is a quarter of a year in a, in a modern organization. That's a long time to research, build, and get something delivered that you're now testing the value on. So, you know, I, I find it really interesting, the directives of why, why 12 weeks for these organizations. It's not because Habanero came in and said, well, you should do this in 12 weeks. But um, in many cases, it was IT or someone in the organization, like a CIO or CEO, that had set the agenda and said, we're going to have a new intranet by this date. 
Um, there was often, sometimes no budget to go longer than three months. And so the budget controlled their idea of what they could deliver. And then in others, it was just an imperative to move off of a sort of an aging, expensive infrastructure that could be where there could be lots of time and cost savings by moving to the cloud. So, so what's changed in the last relatively short few years to make it possible to deliver something so quickly? Um, you know, just briefly, I'll touch on some of the major things that we're seeing. But one is this idea that the modern workplace is the strategy imperative in lots of companies is for innovation and change. Um, and to introduce, and this is part of the work that Habanero does, is to introduce design thinking practice, practices that are lean in nature and they're focused on delivering iterative value through, through human design. Um, and so these, these are three books uh, you may or may not have seen in the market, The Lean Startup, The Sprint Model, written by someone who's from Google, um, and Running Lean. These are some of the new organizational books that are driving relatively large organizations to try and act and be more like a startup. Um, where you're operating in a highly competitive environment and you don't have endless funds and you have to show value quite quickly. So the second thing that I'd say on top of this that's changed is this shift to operational funding from capital funding. So many IT projects are now under the gun for returning value right away. So we're seeing um, just more and more, there just isn't an opportunity to drag these things over the course of two years. Um, so this idea of delivering value quickly is, is getting more and more important for people. Um, and one of the, one of the uh, things you may hear around this is this idea of delivering a minimum viable product. Or at Habanero, we call it the minimum delightful experience. Um, and you know, the, the top one there, you know, how to build a car might represent most of your experience with technology projects where you um, you do the work of the research and then you build something and there's a long period of uh, customization. Um, and then finally, after maybe two, three years, you, you deliver something. Whereas in a minimum delightful experience, you're constantly looking for what can we deliver that's the minimum product that's gonna bring, uh, provide value to the organization and, and engage people um, that we can continue to build on, but by building on, we're creating something new each time. So the other two things that I'll add to this that are just major shifts that have made um, making these internets fast and efficient or quicker to deliver is the advent of the cloud um, that has been a, a significant um, boost to organizations' ability to be agile. Um, you can spin up environments and solutions in the cloud quickly. The cloud is a, a, a sort of a hyper up-to-date environment. If you're working with a product like Office 365, there's a, sort of this always up-to-date um, idea as opposed to the sort of traditional model of IT where every three years we'd get some new software. And, uh, and then the idea of digital transformation, this shift in IT, to being a more strategic player in the organization. I think, I mean, if you, if you, the word digital transformation to me really indicates it's about our idea of technology being transformational for our, for our organizations. And so, you know, and lastly, I, I think it's products like Go that have made this possible where, you know, we've, we um, have thought about a lot of the common capabilities and needs within the market and created a platform you can build on and use to prototype. And so this is obviously making people a lot more efficient and effective at building intranets too. Um, that's not to say that you know intranets developed in 12 weeks aren't fully functional. Um, you know they typically have uh, a fairly rich set of communication features that we'll talk about in a bit. Um, they often have engaging features like here what you're looking at is a, um, a vote for a, um, a, a photo of the month contest um, with one of our clients, Bart and Mallow. Um, they have, they uh, typically are organizing really key resources for employees. Um, so sleep number here, you're looking at some of the key employee essentials um, for their organization. And then, and then finally, and, and perhaps um, just as importantly as everything is, is they're customized with their look and feel and the brand um, so that they feel relevant and, and, and engaging to the organization and they help the organization um, express its culture. And uh, so here's a, a little um, picture of one of the internets we did for liquor stores where they're um, uh, showcasing some, um, some fun photos of their organization. So you might be thinking, uh, but it's not me or we're too complex. I, I thought I'd just address some of the common why not arguments that we hear. Um, the first is, you know, that our intranet is so large and we need to migrate everything. So maybe you have an existing intranet um, it has lots of 
content in it. Maybe it took two years to deliver that one, and you're um, you're thinking you have to completely get rid of it before you start. Um, I definitely think this is a common scenario, and I'd say you know what we're seeing more and more is is co-launching, um, having a new internet that's up and running that has a new set of features running alongside the old internet and longer uh, transitions between the two systems. Um, that's a that's a definite definitely a different approach than we've seen in the past. Um, or and or um, uh, that your new internet doesn't have to do the same things that your old internet did. Um, it's it's not meant to necessarily replace it. Um, there could be a, a completely new set of features that you're seeking. The second thing um, we hear is that, you know, there's no way our company can move that fast. Maybe you're a waterfall company. Um, you're, you're thinking 12 weeks is just way too aggressive. Um, one of the things that I think we've seen beneficial in this is we've been really prescriptive in a lot of um, our recent engagements around um, how to be successful at this. And following that prescription is is one of the formulas for um, allowing organizations to kind of go along with the ride. Um, it's also in some cases we've we've needed to escalate the conversation up to the executive team where the organization gets behind this idea that they're going to they're going to um, themselves shift to being a more agile, iterative organization. And this is one of the projects that, that helps them do that. And then finally, um, we hear, you know, the third argument is that, that our needs are too complex. Um, there's so many stakeholders, there's so many different departments. Um, and for that one, for sure, um, you know, this is where the minimum viable product is especially relevant. Um, thinking about, well, what problems could we solve easily within 12 weeks as a start? Um, and then, of course, there's always pressure to do it, even if you have those circumstances. Someone set a deadline for you, and they've said you need to get it done by this date. And you have a limited budget, so you have to um, work within that budget. You have a commitment as an organization to be more agile. We're seeing that more and more. Um, you, you're wasting money by not moving to the cloud, or, or you are yourselves a modern workplace, and uh, you're interested in, in delivering value faster. So really briefly, I'm going to touch on the process that one of the processes we would use when building an internet so you can kind of get a sense of well, what happens in a 12 week timeline. And then we're going to get a chance to take a look at some of the um, features and functions um, on an internet that um, that enable companies to build them in less than 12 weeks. So we'll start off here with the timeline. Um, so in week one, we're typically kicking off, getting familiar with each other, and, and immediately in week two, getting uh, um, orientation to the organization. We'll usually uh, have some sort of engagement. Uh, we'll have some sort of engagement with an executive team um, in order to understand the strategy of the organization. And one of the big things that we do is a roadmap exercise. And the roadmap exercise is really meant to hone in on what are the most important things that we can deliver in 12 weeks and what are the things that we're going to have to um, put into a future phase. And having this exercise right up front really gets uh, you centered around the most important critical things to deliver. It also helps as a major communication tool to the organization to say, we're not delivering everything all at once. We're going to be doing this over a longer period. Um, and so, but here's what you're getting right away. And here's where perhaps this thing that you wanted um, that we're not delivering fits into the timeline. Um, by week three, we're really getting uh, you on top of content. Content is one of the most important parts of a successful intranet. Um, and so we provide customers with content audit capabilities and tools um, to help them go through the, the content process, so either creating new content or migrating old content, um, and helping manage the governance structures within the internet. And then um, finally, we uh, um, start into analysis and, and developing that content. Um, by week five, we have this working prototype. So uh, the working prototype is a great way for you to um, feel, get your hands dirty, start getting in in front of end users where you're getting feedback um, that allows you to kind of navigate the, the next few weeks. Um, after week five, we start getting into um, configuration. So a large part of our intranets these days are um, really using native functionality and some of the software that we have. Um, and, and so when we use the word configuration, it's not about um, customization, but it's about you know, um, creating something that's bespoke to your organization through, through great configuration. Uh, and then weeks eight, nine, and 10 and on up to week 12 and, and perhaps a little bit longer, we support the change in the organization. So this is all about you know, training and knowledge transfer, getting content authors up to speed um, and starting that migration process, which we have seen for sure take over 12 weeks before. So I thought 
I'll talk a little bit about that. Is every is every client 12 weeks? Um, well, no, uh, they're not. And there there are exceptions to um, to it. And those exceptions come in the why not arguments. And when the why not arguments are so strong um, that we have to navigate around them. So uh, let's just have you put those all on. Um, so any one of these could be a significant issue and a compelling enough reason for something to take longer than 12 weeks. But we think it's really important to think about a 12-week mindset as a way of um, still making iterative um, progress on your internet. And so one example of that is a solution that we did with um, a PHSA, or the Provincial Health Services Authority. And so um, what you're looking at here is their, um, the homepage of their internet. And uh, this, this internet was delivered in less than six months, a very complex organization. Um, you know, to give you a sense of their environment, they're nearly 20,000 employees, um, over 40,000 internet users, because uh, they service content for other health authorities in, in British Columbia. Um, the very complex organization, obviously, as, as, a, as a healthcare agency, um, they had seven existing intranets that they needed to sort of make sense of and eventually migrate content from. Um, of course, the diverse stakeholder community that accompanies that. Um, they had a lot of existing bespoke features features in their internet that they felt were really critical for their future internet. So they, for example, they had an email newsletter um, that went out and summarized content and sent it to different constituents and different, um, with different preferences. And then they had their own in-house development team. So they were looking for Habanero to support them and start the project, but they wanted to build this in-house. And so, uh, you know, we still use this idea of what would be the most minimum delightful experience that we could build um, for this organization. And uh, in this next image here, what you're looking at is the sprint model. So we used a sprint model where every single week we had a minimum viable product output. Um, and so at the end of week two, we had actually worked with a part of the organization, um, developed a prototype, and then took that prototype into the next iterative um, cycle. And so each of these iterations that you see, the one through eight, are us working with the different agencies and looping in and bringing in different content streams. Um, by the end of the 12 week cycle, they didn't have a fully functioning internet, but what they had was a completely working prototype and that was um, full, a fully realized idea of what they needed to build. Um, and then they went on to spend the next three months to um, build it and migrate the content into the internet. So um, a very aggressive sprint model driven timeline that I think is you know, appropriate for, for some organizations. So we've given you a sense of the timelines, um, ways of you know, thinking about what can be done in 12 weeks, um, whether it be a fully fledged internet rollout or you're um, working towards prototyping. And I thought, um, Jan, I'm gonna bring you into the conversation now uh, to give a little tour of what, you know, what does a modern internet look like, especially one that's, um, that we can deliver in 12 weeks. And the first piece of this is, is um, you know, this idea of modern internets deliver great modern communications. And, uh, and so what we hear in the communication sector is that the internet, this new internet is a really gonna be an important part of the program for communicating change. Um, most of the organizations we work with are undergoing some level of transformation or change. And the, and the, and the idea of the internet is that it's a, a major way of, of engaging employees on that, or, on that change. And not only engaging them by communicating, but engaging them in two-way dialogue. Um, there's a desire to embrace the deskless worker, so a, a, a definitely a significant need to make this mobile or mobile friendly. Um, getting the right message to the right person is really important for communicators and getting to know, you know, what is and isn't working. So having statistics and, and understanding of the information and data um, to support better decision making as they as they go forward. Um, so, Jan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Maybe you can give a tour of some of the communication capabilities we have in Go that we typically see in a um, quick start process. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. A lot of great information there. So jumping over into a live demo here, um, showing you kind of what we have with just the out-of-the-box uh, Go configuration. And often this is a great starting point for clients. Actually, some of our clients use Go as it is and just replace the Go logo with their own. But certainly this could be a starting point for other clients who want to extend these features and take advantage of them. So when it comes to the communication pieces, we are showing you here, the main focus is kind of on this area where the communicators can prioritize information and have that and be able to pin the content in this beautiful rich way up here. And they have options where they're showing three articles, one, one that will take up the whole space or maybe two by 
two side by side, depending on the communication needs. And then below that, they also have the option to roll up the most recent news articles in reverse chronological order. Um, so that would just automatically happen. And so it allows people to come in here, see more news directly from within the page. As you're noticing, we also have social capabilities built in. And so if I dig into one of these articles itself, be able to highlight some of the rich authoring uh, options that uh, the communications author will have access to. So we've got options for banner images, identifying who to reach out to or who the author is or the, who the message is coming from, um, tagging, being able to embed videos, um, really rich content here with images, with captions. Maybe there's also the idea of I want to be able to show different types of information to different types of audiences. So kind of got this tab switcher as well as accordion. So in some cases, uh, clients are leveraging. This is an example to move away from the classic audience targeting, have information targeted to different groups in this kind of way. And so all of our pages that we build are highly flexible where you have the options to drop down different web parts or different components on the page itself. Or in some cases, our clients want to customize the whole experience itself. And so the author can control whether they're in, whether they have social commenting, um, whether that's likes or comments itself directly from within the page. We also have options to integrate with Yammer if clients have Yammer, and that's a seamless experience. Um, and so anytime somebody does provide a comment with this particular mechanism, the author will get emailed a note as a result of that. So what we also hear from communicators as well is they want to get some insight into terms of how people are engaging with this content. So we have some options available for them directly within the footer, um, being able to jump over and get a quick sneak peek without having to log into any other system around what are those basic metrics that I might need access to, to engage and see how people are, are, are leveraging this content. We also have the option to collect feedback directly from the page. Um, or any page within Go itself. And so you can send feedback related to the article. Um, you, can be, you can provide that feedback anonymously. Um, we also provide the options and the mechanisms to have this link show up anywhere on the page. So what I'm showing you here is a typical news page, but we've taken this kind of approach to all the web pages within Go itself. Um, right, so like if, um, if there's deeper pages on the internet, sort of content pages for payer benefits or um, perhaps it's knowledge or information stuff, resources like standards or policy procedures, they have the same sort of rich authoring capabilities. Yes, definitely. And so some other things just to, to point out here is around, we've also got to this alerting mechanism, which is more about time sensitive information and maybe you want to convey some urgency. So there's different levels of criticality in terms of rolling up that type of content. Um, and we also have uh, your typical announcements, whether that's geared towards people or it's just general announcements around what's going on in the office doesn't warrant its own featured article, but it's still something that uh, clients would like to call out. And if clients are leveraging the office, the new modern team sites within Office 365, they have a way to get a sneak peek into their different uh, news that's being created on those different team sites and having a way to roll that out centrally within the page. So I'm showing you all these different panels, but we also give the clients these all configuration based. So if some clients don't want to use them, they can just turn them off and move them around, reorganize them. And so Go itself is highly flexible in that way. That's great. Um, you know, I thought uh, just adding to the communication capabilities, I would tell a little story about WestJet because, you know, they're a large organization. They had the feeling that well, there's no way we can play, replace our existing internet quickly. Um, so we use the sprint model to, to like figure out, well, what can we deliver um, that, that helps improve communications in the organization, especially against the big change that they were making around engaging um, the organization around their features. And so they, they took just the, so instead of having a fully fledged internet, they took just the communication features and sort of put those into um, a, uh, a new mobile friendly, uh, something that can reach the flight attendants and, and pilots in the sky. Um, environment. So it's all those same features that you just showcased, uh, Jan. Um, one of the things I'll call out here too is this, this idea of WestJet had a fairly significant investment in Yammer and uh, felt like it was important that those those dialogues and conversations actually occur in Yammer. So um, Go allows that integration to use Yammer as that sort of core platform. So the second um, the second piece we see in modern intranets and, and, and commonly is, is this idea of features that help build a strong culture. Obviously, 
good communications is a major, major part of building good communications, but there's there's other ways that um, companies are reinforcing their cultural norms um, and helping build uh, building cultural change. And so uh, taking a look at here, what we hear from executive teams around this is, you know, we need to bring people along with the journey and have them be brand ambassadors to our organization. Um, we hear a lot, you know, we're, we're building a more and then, you know, put in, put in the adjective here, uh, agile, connected or innovative culture, and they want to reinforce uh, examples in the organizations, the stories where that's occurring. Um, we, we hear a lot, this idea of, you know, despite being distributed, perhaps multinational, um, that they will want the company to be a one company. So sharing uh, insight and ideas is, as part of an innovation agenda. And, um, and they also, just like the communicators, they want to know what is and isn't working. So, so analytics and understanding um, what, where things are going well is really important to them. So um, Jan, I'll let you jump into showcasing some of the stuff we see on internet. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Brian. Um, so what I wanted to showcase here was really around being able to call out and recognize different employees. And so we've made a very easy way to call out these kudos, praise messages within Gov itself. And so directly from the homepage, you're able to call out people, put in a message and hit the submit and that would show up right away. And then people can engage on it. They can like it. They can comment on it. Um, and people will also get an email alert as a response to this. The other options that we have as well are uh, kind of this Yammer uh, panel that will roll up different Yammer conversations. And so this is a really interesting one for some of our clients who have these really rich, engaging either groups or they have a way to hashtag innovation within the organization. And so we have the capabilities to target those conversations and raise awareness about them to bring about a bit of a shift and change of how people are thinking about this. And then the last one that Brian kind of alluded to was more around the photo gallery. So maybe you have a collection of albums and you want to be able to feature one photo from each of those al albums and have that automatically roll out within the homepage. So certainly you have that capability um, as well. And so you kind of get this, this rich image carousel type of idea where people can comment, like, engage in conversation. And again, we have then uh, email notifications to support this idea uh, to go out to people. Great, awesome. And um, just jumping back, I put a few other pictures in here of some of our client examples I thought were kind of neat, innovative uses of the technology to, to do something a little bit different. Um, so for example, with Wawanisa, they have this sort of um, feature panel for people um, where they can uh, talk, uh, feature a person within the organization, um, be it someone that's new to the organization or executive or someone that they want to um, just introduce to the company. Um, and uh, Quadriel, I think is really interesting interesting brand new organization and uh, they've taken this idea of oh, instead of kudos um, we're gonna we're gonna use that feature for inter having people introduce themselves in the organization like who they are um, and I think it's a really clever use of this um, this capability but also helping reinforce this sort of welcoming um, to the organization which is really awesome WestJet um, I thought I'd throw this in there a super simple and easy thing um, added into theirs was this idea of the joke of the week another culture builder if you've ever flown WestJet you'll know one of their sort of um, trademarks is the jokes that the flight attendants tell at the beginning or the ends of flights or or all the way through um, so this is a this is a way for those them to share different jokes of the week um, you know what do you get when you cross a bear with a skunk um, Winnie the Pew I tried to tell that to my son last night he's just not quite old enough to get the joke of it yet. <laughs> um, and then uh, the um, KHSA, I, I, I added this one in if you, if you head on down the page on this one. Um, I think one of the things that um, was interesting with them is, you know, with kudos, um, oftentimes we'll see kudos be specific to a, a business unit. I mean, they're a 20,000 person organization, but one of the interesting things about um, the conversations around kudos was they really wanted to open this up to anyone in the company. So their kudos component isn't, isn't streamlined by sort of um, agency or smaller group. It's, it goes company wide, which is, which is great. Um, so that's uh, the features around helping build cultures. Uh, another kind of core, major important component of um, an, a modern internet is this idea of helping the organization be more productive, improving organizational productivity. Um, we, we tend to see this on the sort of um, the technology's desk, the technology uh, person's desk, whether it's the CIO or, um, or a director of technology there. So, you know, what we hear is that technology executives saying that they're accountable for improving the workplace agility and productivity um, as these two new um, important tenants of, of um, digital transformation 
are handed to them. Um, they also play a major role in improving organizational collaboration, um, especially when no one else in the organization owns collaboration. Um, they, they have a desire to help people use the tools they've given them. Um, they're often uh, surprised that people don't know that they have something that's, um, that's already there that people just don't know exists. And uh, not unlike communicators and executives, they're also interested in trying to figure out you know, what is and isn't working. So that idea of um, traceability and, and, and analytics is really important to them. So for this uh, section, I kind of want to highlight a few different things, and it kind of le leads itself to support the idea of a 12-week engagement. And so often it's a case of what do we do with all this existing team site content that we have, and how do we bring that across? And so we do have a team site directory that supports a very flexible model. And so what I'm showing you here is kind of that model where we're able to roll up different uh, team sites as well as groups, and we have a couple of different mechanisms to do that. In this particular example, we're just showing you um, links, uh, um, curated list of links that IT would manage, or as part of a provisioning process, you would have that automatically populate into this area. And so as you're moving team sites across to the new realm, you can kind of manage that at your own. And so what we've often heard from clients is, you know what, we've got so much content in this one place, let's keep it as is, the project's gonna wrap up in, in a year, and then we'll be able to archive it, and any new team sites, let's spin up an Office 365. And so this idea really supports that. Um, we have also taken the step where clients have fully committed to migrating across their uh, content into Office 365 around rolling up this information with search as well. So lots of different options for the, uh, the teams and groups area. Um, in terms of having that one place stop shop of all the knowledge and tools that are around in the organization, we've created this simple repository around being able to collect that information and tag it and show it up. And so We've got some options around maybe if I wanted to search for our guest Wi-Fi network, I have kind of this type of head searching experience where I can dig into actually web pages. Uh, maybe there's some external links. Maybe this is WorkSafe BC content that I need to pull in, but I don't want to own, but it's out there. It's documents that are rolling up uh, within this area. Or maybe I just want to browse by a particular topic or type. And so this provides us a very simple mechanism for those policies and procedures. Certainly, this is a place that we have seen whole solutions built on in terms of how complex people want to be. Right. So, so on the on the vein of the topic of this conversation, you know, build your internet in twelve weeks or less. There's going to be aspects of this that people can deliver in those twelve weeks, but um, it's it's certainly unlikely that you're going to go through and solve every knowledge management problem in in the organization with with your internet. Yeah. Um, exactly. And so the other thing we wanted to mention around this as well is being able to surface up some of those metrics on how people are using the internet as well. So within Go itself, we have some really rich capabilities by either rolling things up through Power BI or Google Analytics and creating really rich dashboards um, and presenting that information back. Yeah, and I, I would say that almost deserves a presentation in and of itself to uh, be able to show all of the rich analytics features. Um, we'd love the opportunity to show those also because it's part of, uh, I'd say one of the more um, exciting places of, of creating change in organizations and being able to understand what people are doing. Um, everything in Go uh, is event-driven, so um, we have a, a fairly sophisticated read on what, what people are doing in the, when they're in there. Um, so the, the last one we'll just touch on is some of those uh, things we hear from end users um, that are really important to them. You know, m most end users, uh, despite the fact that they do want to be connected to the company and their culture, they, they just really want tools to help them in their job. Um, they're often confused by the number of options and places they need to go to, to do their work. Um, they will often want to connect to someone quickly and find people in the organization that can help them with their, their needs. Um, and their expectations are quite high that they want new features and improvements regularly. Um, this is certainly the consumerization of IT is um, led into the expectations for, for how companies should be delivering IT. So this is super exciting for us because this is one of the newer features for us. So we have this idea around preferences. And so this is an area where people have the ability to go and set up their own preferences across a number of different facets of Go itself. And so if, as an example for news, I'm able to go in and say, you know what, these are the specific things that I'm interested in. And of course, these are the things that we'd work through as part of that initial stage of an engagement to figure out, do we want to slice on locations and categories or is it some other um, component that we wanted to be able to drill down. Um, so when somebody does come in here and select on one of those options, 
they would automatically get the, new, the news filtered to them based on whatever they select in this particular area. And so it takes the emphasis away from IT to have to try and figure this out and manage and puts it more on the end user to provide them with a mechanism to uh, set their own preferences. So, and like uh, you said, um, the, the communicators could, you know, disallow them to unselect something if, they, if there's news they want them to see, like, yeah, safety, so safety like information. Strategy right? or vision, that's really important to get out, exactly. and so they can unselect that and not have that show up, and so people would automatically get that uh, information. So we'll, that, we'll often see in these 12-week projects, too, that um, you, won't, you won't boil the ocean with these preferences. Um, no. starts, starts so on, did I just take your thunder away from that one? <laughs> 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 you were going to say that. <laughs> Some other areas that uh, really help out, we've often seen intranets that are very cluttered because they try and cram everything on the homepage. So we provided a simple mechanism to get quick access to all the tools that you need. And so we have this My Work concept where it's kind of this immersive panel that flies out, shows me all the documents and sites that I'm following across SharePoint itself, across any of the team sites, and being able to get quick access to them. I have a toolkit here, I'm Tim Jones in this scenario, and I'm based out of our New York office, so I have some specific toolkits uh, options that are targeted towards me, either based on my location or role or whatever it makes sense for your organization. And then we've got the classic popular links that is applicable to everybody. And then rolling up uh, Office 365 groups that I belong to, so I have quick access to get back into those groups as well. Um, in terms of some other things, we often hear that people just want to find other people, either but they know their name, they just want to find their photo, or maybe they want to find their uh, phone number. So being able to search for Peter quickly, or you know what, I'm not quite sure what that person's name is, um, but I know that they do something in accounting. So have that quick people search finder experience. And all of our pages, as previously men mentioned, are responsive and support touch. So if I'm on a mobile device, I can click on the number, it brings up the phone dialer. So making sure that that's a really rich experience. And if you don't find what you're looking for, you can then go off to the full search experience where you can drill down, navigate, um, provide feedback if you're not uh, finding what you're looking for. The last thing I did want to call out here is kind of this more emerging practice of chatbots. And so you may so I, I'll, I'll step in and say we, we actually we have a lot of clients that are asking about like how to chatbots, how will they take over intranets? Maybe we won't have intranets anymore. Um, you know, that's it's a really interesting topic for a lot of companies right now. And so we've created our own little, we have a Nero consulting group, uh, we create our own little Pepper chatbot. And so um, the idea here is that we are able to integrate with a lot of different systems and bring that information to the forefront. And so make people's lives really easy in that regard. And so I'll just show you a couple of examples around, you know, maybe I want to find uh, the recent uh, documents that I've been working on. And so being able to ask Pepper to find my recent documents and what it's going to do now is go off and come back with my top number of documents that I've been working on that may be relevant to me. Or maybe I want to get, you know, benefits, get benefits uh, information. And so uh, what it's gonna go off, it's gonna go off and it couldn't found something for me uh, around about great, we use Great West Life here at Heaven Euro, it found something, but it wasn't hundred percent sure. So the idea here is that I can still start building on the confidence of this answer, so it, it improves this experience for the next person. So it's using um, the cognitive search to look for information on the internet and crawl and figure out what it thinks it needs, and then it's using cognitive learning or learning, um, machine learning to kind of advance its ability to return the right results next time. Exactly. Um, you know what? I, yeah, I I, um, I think Pepper is probably one of our most exciting things. There's so many things that uh, we could show with Pepper around. You know, asking for it to take. Uh, a sick day for you, uh, or um, or finding people in a CRM system, um, we'd love to show it off. And you know, how do I get going? If if the obvious next step for you isn't um, you know giving us a call and, and getting a personal demo and having us talk through either the process or the technology with you, um, we do have a really um, engaging and common way that people engage us in and that is doing a one week intensive sprint. Um, you know, these one week intensive sprints are a way to uh, limit your investment in just getting the ball rolling um, and getting ahead of the roadblocks that we common, commonly see in organizations. So, you know, help build a future, a vision for the future. Um, walk away with something tangible at the end that you can use to inspire and engage um, executives and end users in the organization and, and deliver that you know, minimum viable product or um, minimum delightful experience to the organization. So common model around the one week sprint, you know, day one, 
we're looking and discussing the roadblocks and the opportunity. Um, you know, what's what uh, whether it be you're interested in in um, building a new internet, but you're not sure exactly how or what is going to be the priority features or capabilities, and how that maps to something you might have. Um, we'll do take do they too uh, stakeholder research and start to really dig into um, both you know if it's executives or end users um, the sort of on the ground mood around what it is you're interested in doing. Um, we come back with that data and start to create some options and a uh, really innovative, exciting day of um, coming up with possibility. Um, day four, we're starting to build something out, a prototype. Sometimes it's just a mock or a, 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 a screen image of what it is we think we're, we want. And then on, the, on day five, we start to test that. We deliver it and uh, get validation and feedback around it. So um, you can kind of take that and run with it. So it's an awesome way to get the ball rolling um, in a low cost way to um, to kind of time box uh, this idea of, of getting your internet up. So I'm speaking, speaking from experience, I just came off one of these. You did, no, I mean, it was intense, right? It was very it was, intense, yes. but it was very exciting at the same time because yeah. you're generating a lot of excitement and possibilities for a client and they're kind of starting to figure out the next steps for themselves, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, I think it's an awesome way to start any project because um, it starts to get people uh, used to the sprint model, which is yeah. which is um, you know a twelve week cycle is intense in general. Like it's it's a every week is a busy week. So, um, if you are interested in a sprint uh, or you just want to talk to us more about what you saw today, um, talk about twelve weeks or less, or you have a really complex scenario that you just like to run past us, um, feel free to give both Jan or myself a call. Um, we're actually our phone numbers aren't up there, so send us an email, and uh, we'd be happy to um, chat with you. About that, and we'll. I'll leave a second here for um, any questions that we might get. There's none coming up through um, GoToWebinar yet, but we'll we'll give a moment here for people to maybe you can leave our our faces up with as our email. Awesome, thanks. That was a little longer than I expected. <laughs> We're at 45 minutes. I think we put 40 in the invite. So, um, all right. Do you have one question here? I kind of a detailed question around the technology. Um, is Go multilingual? So yes, definitely. Go is multilingual. We support the capabilities to support uh, any number of languages. Um, so we we support uh, French and English, and then it would be up to the clients to work with uh, the translation services to get the other languages uh, set up. So it is multilingual. Cool. Um, no other questions. Great. Well, like we said earlier, if you want to get a copy of this presentation, reach out to us. If you're interested in a sprint, reach out to us. Um, we're excited to share uh, what I think is kind of an emerging practice in, in the way we deliver IT solutions and technology in general. So um, be happy to. Uh, oops. Go. Oh, just as I close out, we have another question. Um, so the question is, are the features you just showed applicable to cloud or on prem? You know, when we, when we put this presentation together, we obviously built it and have talked all about Office 365, but um, but everything we showed today um, yeah. supports on-prem. So certainly our clients, obviously the integration with Office 365 groups, there's some, there's some elements there, but most of the features that we build out are geared for on-prem. So we have on-premise clients, and in terms of the code base itself, it's exactly the same, except for some minor nuances. Um, so most of the features that you saw today are on-premise as well. Um, yeah, and so our deploy deployment engine is exactly the same. Um, so, and I, I would question. say, like, yeah, good question. And I would say, um, you know, one of the things that we think is really critical, that if you're an on-prem company, you really need to start wrapping your head around what cloud development looks like um, and start to build your on-prem solutions so that they're cloud ready. Um, I think a, it's a mistake to just kind of build things the way we used to always build them with, um, because they're just going to take a lot of time and energy to, to upgrade to the cloud when and, and if you make that call. So um, it's, you know, even if you're going on-prem, I would say, you know, have the cloud model um, for development and development frameworks in mind. Um, and Go, uh, we didn't mention this, but Go has a developer edition. So it is um, built for companies also to, to build on their own um, and take the, the, um, the sort of foundation of Go and, and create their own internet. Uh, thanks for the questions, everyone. And uh, yeah, we look forward to, oh, another question comes in. Right as we end. <laughs> Uh, what are the what are the biggest risks to making a twelve week initiative successful? That's a really big I th question. I, I think the it. number one is just availability of the client to be able to be present in that twelve weeks. Because oftentimes we see people are planning vacations; they might be gone for two weeks, and so 
uh, it's a pretty intense week. Um, and so the feedback we've heard from clients is we, we're used to that pace because we do it fairly often. But some of our clients that tend to be a little bit slower moving uh, feel like they're kind of getting dragged along. And so we do a lot in order to pre-prep them, but having people's calendars available ahead of that and making sure that they're available and engaged and have the time to work on it um, is definitely critical to the success of that 12 weeks. Yeah, and so when, and one of the things we do in the beginning of the project is, is kind of set up um, you know, what's required on the client side in terms of resources, um, where, where would they be expected to be part of the solution in the building of the project. So um, we do help with that in the beginning of the project. And I, the, I guess the other thing I'd mention um, is, um, you know, what, what are the biggest risks to making this successful is, um, you know, one of the things we didn't talk a lot about is change, but obviously these are change initiatives in the organization. And um, doing everything that you can to support that change in the organization, engaging um, end users as much as possible um, to be to be part of that journey, as well as, as as the right kind of communications and engagement within the organization when you're ready to go live are really kind of critical to you. Yeah, one of the things that come to mind is definitely not technology that's a barrier anymore. Because even for PHSA, we developed out a proof of concept in Office 365, even though they never went to Office 365. They went right, to not the benefit of the cloud, cloud, right? Exactly. So it allowed us to rapidly prototype something, get buy-in from all the stakeholders, get agreement in terms of what they were going to be building out on their own later on, um, and get that consensus. So it really did help to eliminate that risk. Awesome. OK, well, I'm not going to answer any other questions. If, they if you have any questions, <laughs> yeah. reach out to us. Give us a call. Um, thanks for joining today. Thank you. Bye. Bye.